sending a message. Kim Jong-un is in Russia for the first time since he took office. The North Korean leader will be meeting with his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin, tomorrow following a no-deal summit with President Trump. Here now is Olivia Enos from the Heritage Foundation. What do you make of this meeting? I mean, these guys were, I, I mean, they were allies to begin with anyway. So is it that big of a deal or what's your take? I think Kim Jong-un is looking for some sort of deliverable after negotiations fell apart between the U.S. and North Korea in the, in, at the Hanoi summit. And I think that when he came back from Hanoi, he wasn't able to deliver something that his people really wanted, which was sanctions relief. And he had essentially promised that to his people before he left. Those expectations had been set, and then they weren't met. And so I think he's going to his, as you said, pseudo-ally, looking for a way out, looking for a way to release the pressure. And I think, if anything, the fact that he's going to Russia right now should send a clear message to the Trump administration that putting greater pressure on North Korea is actually the right strategy, because they're looking for any way they can to really, you know, take the foot off the gas and not have to deal with the consequences of that maximum pressure strategy. Yeah, I mean, in a way, it shows that it's working. And for those who said that the president was too soft um, on Kim Jong Un before, you know, I mean, that this this shows that the walk away had an impact. I mean, I guess we'll see if it if it goes anywhere from there. In the meantime, the Iranian foreign minister, I thought this was really interesting, firing back at the White House over oil sanctions, saying that the U.S. is pursuing a very dangerous policy towards Tehran. Um, they said it will not change Iranian policy, um, and and just really firing off. Um, Iran's national security is going to keep the Strait of Hormuz open. Um, just a, a lot of different comments, uh, you know, trying to rattle the president's cage. What's your take? It's incredibly hypocritical for Iran to be telling the U.S. to back off from some sort of dangerous policy. Iran itself is the largest state sponsor of terrorism. They have, in fact, allegedly injured more than 600 Americans uh, during the Iraq War. They're incredibly dangerous. I think, if anything, this should sort of embolden the Trump administration to also raise pressure on Iran as well. Now, that being said, I think that there were some challenges with the waivers that were not extended. For example, we, you know, released all of the waivers from being able to be implemented um, and made it so that all the sanctions were being implemented in a uniform way in the case of Iran with little to no regard for our allies, including India, um, South Korea, and Japan. And this is concerning. But the Trump administration should view this as we really need to continue to maintain yeah. pressure on Iran. And it's ridiculous for the Iranian regime to be calling U.S. policy dangerous. It's it's nothing. Like I that. also thought so. They said that the U.S. does not need a new negotiating table, which I think is a little English as a second language. We know what they mean there. Uh, the nuclear agreement was the best deal that we could achieve. I always thought when they you have Iran talking about how great the deal is and wanting to be a part of it and sad that it's over, it obviously is pretty good for them and pretty bad for us. If they're begging, you know, please don't throw me in the briar patch. Um, it just it seems like that's that's more evidence that the nuclear deal was bad for us and good for them. What do you think? You know, I think that the U.S. really seeks to enter into agreements that have longevity, enter into agreements where U.S. interests are best advanced. And so I think, you know, that's why we pulled out of the JCPOA. That's why the president walked away from the summit in Hanoi, because he recognized that this was not the best deal. This wasn't going to be the best way to advance U.S. interests. And so I think that there is definitely a need to maintain pressure in the ways that we can, whether that's through rhetorically or just making sure that we have the best deal as possible. And I think the Iranian regime is, is starting to recognize that this administration is very serious about getting the right deal at the right time uh, yeah. and the right deal for Americans going forward. We'll see. Olivia, thank you.